I mean, how many of you guys really get that it's all just a story? Right? Your life, your business, it's all story. And, um, and we'll talk about this later, but I, I have found the more intense and painful and dark and scary the story from the past, the better the leader, the better the opportunity, the better the business. You know? So anybody who's sitting here in the room today and is thinking, you know, what do I have to offer? That story that you're in right now is so powerful when you can transmute it into a force for good. That insecurity, that hesitation, that worry, that nervousness, that place where you don't know what to do, right now, even if you're in it, the moment you can say, holy crap, that's my story. Me overcoming that, me stepping beyond that and showing other people how to do it, that's my story. Awesome. And now you're creating the success story as it happens. We're going to bring up somebody who has made a profound difference in my own personal life. I actually work with Charu on a weekly basis every single week, and I have for the past few months now. So this is somebody that I have trusted and hired to work with me personally. And I came to her because, um, it, you know, sometimes this is surprising for people to hear, but I had this feeling like I wasn't quite um, as... You know the word I'm going to say is I wasn't quite as strong or as um, magnetic. That's what it was. I wasn't quite as magnetic as I wanted to be. And I saw Charu and I've known Charu and she's one of those people where um, you kind of can't help but be captivated by her presence. Like there's a uh, an attraction to her that is so easy to kind of say yes to. And I know that she does a lot of private training with people and in particular she's really good at working with people on a kind of a deeper level of really helping them get to that place where they feel grounded and rooted in their own confidence and their own magnetism because you guys all know that everybody can be magnetic, yes? It's just like sometimes the how it's like completely unavailable to me, right? Like, how do you do it? My awareness has no recollection of how to remove those blocks or create that space that really allows me to be what I know is capable. And, you know, it's, it's whenever you ask for something, then it shows up. So, uh, Charu showed up, and I've been working with her every week, and it, it's been just utterly profound. I think the most significant benefit that I can say is for the first time in my life, I don't feel like I need to try to please anybody. Right? It's good, right? It's good, where it's like I can now so just effortlessly and gently show up from this place of kind of rooted, grounded transparency and truth and confidence and the right people will come to me. And that is absolutely a byproduct or a result of working with Charu. So you're in for a real treat. I have a lot of love and a lot of trust for this woman because of what she's helped for me in my life. So please, everybody stand up and give a warm round of, where is she? Give a warm round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Good strategy. Exactly. I learned from the best. Okay, you can all sit down. Oh, thank you so much, Max. That's Who doesn't want to be announced with that kind of... I, I mean, it's just so rich. And I actually want you to remember, for lots of reasons, but I want you to remember what he just said because I'm going to refer back to that in this presentation because it's a really um, powerful, some really powerful points that he made, not only about me but about his own experience that we're going to come back to. So I want to talk today a little bit about where our starting point is. Max has gone over this again and again, really grounding us in right now, we're at a place where we have a message. Every single person in this room has a message that we are longing to share. And what's incredible about this tribe, this group, is that our messages really come from our heart, from our spirit, right? As how many people in here can say, yes, my message comes from my heart. Good, excellent. So. 
It's this is this is really important. And now with Max's help, we're learning to be, we're learning to fill rooms. We're learning to fill rooms so that we can share this message from our hearts that we are compelled to share. Now the problem that each and every one of us faces is that we are not all born speakers, right? <laughs> so this is, this is the arc that we're gonna explore in this hour and a half that I have with you, is how do I get from where I am now, and even beyond speaking, we really, we're the avatar. We are the representation of our brand. And as the representation of my brand, if I am not radiant, if I am not fully alive, if my self-consciousness or insecurity is coming through, it's going to be very difficult for people to say yes to me. So what we're going to do is go from where we are now, with whatever that is, all of us have different spaces that we're starting at, and arc through to where we want to be, this radiant, easy to say yes to, uh, embodied and alive presenter. So I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself. Get a little more comfortable. This is this is a little more the real me. No heels, and I um, and and even these little pieces. I just want you to, to take note of that because these things are important too. And it's it's really so much about allowing yourself to be who you really are, rather than holding up this image of who you think your audience wants you to be. So I just that was a little hint. So, who am I? I am a nice girl who was raised in Greenwich, Connecticut. And I don't know, are there any East Coasters or Connecticut? All right, hi. <laughs> so, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that um, this, this is a really a high pressure, go get them place to grow up. This is, I think Greenwich is known as being the number one place where CEOs live and raise their families. And, Consequently, my high school was incredibly high pressure and I, I think we had the number one, um, this is a terrible statistic, I, I almost hate to share it with you, but I think we had the number one amount of suicides, the highest rate of suicides, because of this intense pressure in this society. And so long before high school, I was in a place where I was looking around at my parents and how they did things. They were not high-powered CEOs, but they were still part of the this circle and looking at the kids that I went to school with and their parents and their families and I just looked around and I went there's got to be more.